me start out with a brief correction. As I finished the uh, youth time at Zion, I asked the children to listen for a word, the word covenant coming up in the readings and sermons. I promise you I'm only preaching one sermon today. <laughs> and I have a feeling you're probably only here for one sermon. <laughs> Well, sisters and brothers, grace and peace are yours this day from God, our Creator. Amen. These last few days, there has been a lot, a lot going on with the pandemic and the election. So in case things are feeling a bit heavy to you, let me repeat. Grace and peace are yours this day from God, our Creator. Amen. Have you ever had an experience when a Bible verse or passage just kind of pops up, but it feels like God put it in front of you at that very moment for a specific purpose? I see some heads nodding, yes. As if God knew exactly what you needed to hear right then. Well, that's how I felt this week when I read the passage from Joshua for today. The prophet Joshua was living in a time when the Israelites were influenced by people all around them. Other local tribes were worshiping multiple gods, and, and the close proximity of all those tribes meant that the Israelites were learning of these other belief systems, and the Israelites were becoming vulnerable to straying from their belief in Yahweh. In our passage from Joshua today, we see a moment of reckoning. The prophet reminds the Israelites of all that the one true God has done for them. And then the people, they name God's actions as well, saying, For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. The Lord our God, we will serve, and him we will obey. The passage closes by saying, So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day. Well, it was really God making a covenant with that people today. Joshua was speaking the words of that covenant, and a covenant is a promise of God's action. A covenant is a promise of God's action initiated by God for the benefit of the people. And this was not the first covenant God made with people, nor would it be the last. The Old Testament includes many of these, and some of them should sound familiar. Like when God made a covenant with Abraham saying, go from your country, from your kindred, from your father's house into the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and bless you. Or the covenant God made with Jeremiah saying, one day I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And in passage from Joshua, God is making another covenant. At a time when the Israelites were weak in faith and being influenced by tribes all around them, Joshua, Joshua centered them. And the best way to call them back to their faith in God was by reminding them of God's actions throughout history. Joshua called the Israelites back to God, back to their faith by reminding the people of everything God had done for and with them. As I read that passage last week, I couldn't help but think of the time that we live in right now. There are so many influences impacting our faith. Just think of all the things that vie for our attention during the day. Work, school, activities with our families, the pandemic, the election, my goodness, the election, right? Seems like it's been taking up a lot of our time recently. There has been so much going on. And that's why I feel like God put this text from Joshua in front of us right now. Just like the Israelites before us, we have an opportunity to recognize that, yes, there are influences all around us. 
but we cannot let those influences pull us away from our faith in God. We have an opportunity to remember who God is and recommit ourselves to serving the Lord our God. It's not to say that any of those other things are not important. They surely are. But there is a way to look for God in the midst of everything that's going on. In this moment when many of us are having strong reactions to the news around the election, jo Joshua can center us too. Joshua can bring us back to what matters. And now, today, for me, it feels like a good time to recommit to God, to proclaim who it is that we serve. Which is why I don't believe that it's a coincidence that this passage from Joshua is part of our readings today. We, too, are in a time when we get to choose who we will serve. The Israelites, the Israelites had to decide between foreign gods or the God who led them out of Egypt. But what about us? What are our choices? You've got to think about that a little bit, because every day we are presented with choices. We can choose our actions. We can choose our words. We can choose who or what we will serve. And when we come before the Lord, as the bridesmaids do, bridesmaids do in our gospel reading, will the Lord recognize us? Or will the Lord say, truly, I do not know you? That's a tough passage. That's a tough passage to get to the gates and to hear that phrase from the Lord, truly, I do not know you. But I was prompted to think about it in a, in a different way over the last week. As some of you may know, I am the parent of a four-year-old, and I have been able to watch her reach many, many milestones over the years. Nowadays, she's becoming more and more independent, very independent, I would say. She's got a great imagination, she's thinking for herself, and I'm often surprised at getting to watch just how much she can do. But sometimes, sometimes, my little angel, her behavior surprises me in a bad way. Now, it's nothing out of the ordinary. I mean, we're talking about a four-year-old, right? But I have found myself saying to her, child, what do you think you are doing? <laughs> this behavior isn't like you. This is not who you are. And I wonder if that's how the Lord spoke to the foolish bridesmaids that day, with a tone of parental tough love, I would say. As the bridesmaids are at that closed gate, they too had an experience. They had an experience that was a moment of reckoning for them, a moment when they realized that they had gotten their priorities wrong that day. And I wish, I wish this reading would keep going because I want the foolish bridesmaids to have a chance to say, you are right, Lord, because we have had the wrong priorities. But today we remember all that you have done for us. And now we recommit, we proclaim that we will serve the Lord. That's what I wish the text would say, but it doesn't. This moment in time for us, after a difficult campaign season, at a time when our country feels so divided, this could be another one of those moments of reckoning when we have a choice, when we have a choice of how we will act, of what we will say. We have a choice of who or what we will serve. Joshua proclaimed, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I wonder, what does it mean for us today to serve the Lord? That's not a question that we can answer in this very worship service. I hope it's a question that you'll take with you and think about today and perhaps even longer. What does it mean for us to serve the Lord 
I'm sure we each have different answers for that question, but, but for weeks now, I have been pondering that question myself, and I can't answer it without recalling the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you have trouble remembering that list, there's a really good camp song that can help you, and I cannot sing it for you this morning. But it's a great song. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. As you ponder that question of what it means to serve the Lord today, in the midst of a pandemic with all the influences of family, work, school, home life, all vying for your attention, and especially in these days when there are a lot of emotions about the election results, I put before you again the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We are living in a time with a lot going on. Even if it wasn't election season, even if there weren't a pandemic around us, there's always so much going on these days. But there has always been a lot going on in the world. I told my husband yesterday that I didn't know if today would be a tough day for people or not because People are all over the map right now. Some people are burnt out. Some people are overjoyed. Some people are angry. But no matter where you are, in that respect at least, no matter where you are in terms of all the other things happening around you, to be in worship, you're in the right place. This is the right place to be today. Because in worship, we come together under the cross. We recognize that we all fall short of God's glory. And I pray that we would all know we are united by God's love. We are the body of Christ. We are brothers and sisters. And for us, I venture to say, for us and for this house, we will serve the Lord with our actions, with our words, with our choices. We will serve the Lord. Would you pray with me? O oh Lord our God, you are truly holy, and we thank you so much for all that you have given us each and every day. We know that you walk alongside us in the midst of anything and everything that is happening around us and even within our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would remind us that we are the body of Christ together. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, and we belong to you, Lord. Be with us each and every day as we make choices in who or what we will serve as we make choices of our actions and our words, Lord, and always call us back to you, reminding us that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, thank you for calling us your own and for being with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.